Hi, Tom from Fluval here today. Today we're covering PAR. We've uh, got a number of questions from you concerning PAR, what the specs are on our lighting system, so we thought we'd give you some insight into what PAR is and its limitations and some of the things that really maybe are perhaps a little bit more important than PAR sometimes. PAR is photosynthetically active radiation. Now that's obviously important because it concerns the uh, total amount of radiation in light that falls within a given surface over a specific time. It's actually, PAR is actually measured as micromoles per meter squared per second. So, but the, the limitation of PAR is that there is no differentiation between the different wavelengths of light. So it's a total photon count. That's where the micromoles comes in. That's the actual count of the total number of photons. Now, as we well know, coral have an action spectra that's composed much more of the blue spectrum. So if you were to use a, a, a light with the wrong spectrum of light, it might have a higher PAR value. That would not be the better choice for your aquarium versus one that might be slightly less in PAR, but contain much more blue light of various lengths of it. So uh, it's limited. It's basically a measure of total number of photons or total light quantity. Now, when you're looking at your aquarium itself, you can see there are factors that will impact PAR. Uh, if you have an unclean glass top, you have uh, an organic compound in the water that's staining your water, uh, these things will reduce PAR values. PAR values are typically generated in air when they're put on a package or when a company reports them because there's so many different water conditions, it would be hard for, to account for them all. So it may not be what you're getting in your tank. You'd have to actually measure it with an underwater sensor, which is possible to do, to really see what PAR you're getting in your aquarium. You also got to understand that some corals, even of the same species, uh, have grown under different PAR values, and you may not be aware of that. You may not be aware of corals that are imported and what PAR they've actually grown under. So you're still going to have to evaluate the animal itself, which is really where it starts. And you may have to make an adjustment. Like if you look at the star polyp we have in this aquarium, this, this has done tremendously well. It is positioned about halfway up under some pretty intense LED lighting at the back, which is very strong in the blue spectrum, hence the really nice fluorescing of this coral. And we've decided to leave it there because of how well it's spread and how well it's doing. So the evaluation really always starts with the animal itself. PAR is not the be-all and end-all of everything. There's other measures of light quantity as well to give you a guideline, but it really starts with spectrum, the most important factor. Now you also got to look at the type of lighting source you have. If you're looking at LED, for example, and a lighting fixture that has a lesser LED count but very high wattage LEDs, obviously the light distribution is impacted that way. You'll get very high spotty values of PAR and less of a general value, a general average value that's spread out across your tank, typically speaking. Uh, of course, lenses can help that, but it all depends what lenses are being used. So those are something, that is something you have to look at too. Other types of LED lights that have multiple LEDs of various spectrums that spread out all across your tank may in fact be better for a lot of more shallow water applications, tanks that aren't that deep, where you're really concerned about spectrum and getting all the different wavelengths of light to a particular coral or to the corals in general. Look at nature itself. PAR values vary. They're not the same all day long. You have weather systems, uh, clouds moving by. Uh, there are many factors, wave turbulence and heavy winds. Uh, all these things will reduce PAR. So it's not, it's not a consistent uh, measurement all the time. Corals can adapt to slight variations. In fact, they've evolved to do so. So that's it. Uh, thanks for listening. We appreciate your attention. We're always looking to hear from you. And it was a pleasure talking to you about PAR today.